with Sustainable Times, correct? That's correct. Yes. And you are a sponsor for the 2009 Burgers and Brew, Reef yes. Burgers and Brew. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, you know, why, first of all, why did you decide to sponsor, to be a sponsor? Well, because it's an event that uh, is completely in line with what my newspaper stands for. Okay. Um, really, it's a celebration of local local food, local craft food producers, and craft beer producers. And so it's it, that's what my, paper, my newspaper is about, Sustainable Times is about um, local local businesses and local foods. Okay, and you know, silly question, why is local important? Local is important for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, the main ones are economic and also to uh, keep strong, uh, strong communities. Uh, if we buy locally and if we if we use what is can be grown locally and what is produced locally, a lot more money stays in our community. We create diversified uh, communities with a diversified economic basis, which makes our community stronger, um, economically and socially. Okay. And you're th now this is sardine, right? This is sardine, yeah. Okay. Sister uh, restaurant from Maryville Kitchen. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about what you came up with for uh, burgers and grill. Well, uh, pretty, exci pretty move, exciting stuff here. We, uh, seeing that it's still rhubarb season, we thought it was a great way to mix a little rhubarb. We got Northwoods Farms uh, organic beef, okay. and uh, just thought it'd be kind of interesting mix. With, uh, you know, there's a lot of tasty burgers out here today. We thought we'd do something a little, try something a little different. We did a uh, rhubarb marmalade. Okay. It has whole oranges in it as well. It kind of go well with the uh, the beer we're serving from New Glarus. Okay. And uh, since rhubarb sort of in its uh, well, not quite as peak, but head in the we thought we'd use that. We've got uh, a little bit of a uh, spice coming from our arugula from Garden B. Scott okay. over here. Yeah. He uh, he's got baby arugula up, which adds a nice little spice to the sweetness of the marmalade. Okay. Got a little uh, little little aioli and a little uh, little a little Dijon mustard and blue okay. cheese to sort of round out the earthiness and flavors. Mm. So that's uh, that's a fancy fancy version of it. it's just a burger. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like just so much more than a burger. Yeah, well, you know what? It's, it all comes down to, you know, grilling out and having fun and having some beers out here. So right. Now tell a, me a little bit about the beer. Uh, the beer is yeah. Stone Soup. You know, you should and probably you talk to Jeff with New Glarus Brewing Company. Jeff, can I get you to move over this way? <laughs> I wanted to talk about the beer, but I thought, why am I talking yeah. about your beer? Tell it's me great. a little bit about the, about the brew. Today. Our Stone Soup is uh, uh, Belgian Abbey Ale. Uh, it's a very nice beer. It's uh -huh. Uh, a little fruity, uh, a little sour, uh, nice Belgian yeast, and Dan uh, did a phenomenal job on this brew. So it uh, goes very, very well with this with this burger. So. Why? I mean, what, what makes the two go go well together? You get that, like you're talking about the fruitiness of that a little bit. Yeah. Almost has it. What, what is the uh, base of it though? It's not wheat, though, is it? It's a little. Wheat. It has a little wheat in it, right? Okay. And, uh, Wisconsin Wisconsin barley. It uh, it goes well because the the, the fruitiness uh, complements all of the the fruit flavors. The rhubarb. What are you suggesting that people have now for maybe uh, those of us that do a little bit simpler burger for the 4th of July that's coming up? Uh, what would be a, a good beer to go with that? That's a no-brainer. Spotted cow. Goes great with the Wisconsin food day in and day out. Yeah. Okay, uh, and who are we speaking with? This is Brett Linger. I'm the sous chef at Blue Feast. Okay, and tell me a little bit about what you prepared for today's uh, burgers and brew. Our farmer today was the Jordan Dahl Farms. We uh -huh. have got uh, ground beef and andouille sausage. We have a ground beef andouille with poblano pepper, red pepper, uh, meatloaf burger. Okay. A caramelized onion and jalapeno marmalade, uh -huh. as well as some diced up pepidou sweet red peppers. Uh -huh. And we are paired with the Capital Brewery Wild Rice Beer. Wow. Oh yes, a lot. A majority of the things that are on our menu at the restaurant are all local grown. Uh, quite a few organic items. Um, mm -hmm. but a lot of local grown. Yes. We and are why is that? It makes it a lot easier for people to get um, the quality product in the local. It helps support local entrepreneurs, which mm -hmm. keeps you know, money and everything in, in the local areas. Okay. And the taste is always nice with that. You get a lot of organic. You don't have to worry about pesticides or any extra things going into your food. Uh -huh. 
I guess one thing that kind of I mean surprises me a little bit is that I mean Bluefish is not known as being a particularly expensive restaurant. Oh, no, not at all. We try to keep all of our all of our prices so that we can get the average family to come in and be able to enjoy a nice meal with all courses of appetizers, entrees, and desserts, and okay. whatever you want for drinks. Okay. Process started. Burger. Burger. There you go. I'm waiting for you to say burger. Come on. I'll make it really exciting when I do. All right. I promise. Okay. I'll have a look of frantic, <laughs> frantic look on my face. Our, our complete joy. Burger. Say it again. I think you missed it. Burger! <laughs> Burger! No, sorry. I think, I, I think. That's just no one mix. really no nice burger. Two or no mix. Orders we don't need Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you hang on to the glasses. So this is the $10. Each of these is worth an extra beer or dessert. I had just heard about it before that and he suggested that we do our Metcalf's signature Hungarian seasoning oh. in a burger. Okay. And then I paired up with Kloss and Swiss cheese bun and Hawkwinds um, from Baraboo to do the condiments. Okay. And um, it just all went from there. Okay. And Great Dane Pub. Tell me a little bit about the, about the, uh, the burger. The burger is Otter Creek organic pork okay. and then the seasoning Seasoning is a pre-mixed seasoning. We 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 mix it ourselves. We've had it mixed. It's my great grandfather's Hungarian spices, yeah. and we mixed that in with the Otter Creek organic pork, and then we just made them hand made them into patties. And that yep. is a major sponsor for Burgers and Brew. Is that correct? That is very true. Great. And these are our Bratfest grills. We had cleaned and we brought out here for Burgers and Brew to use. You're kidding. These are the famous grills. For these the are the Famous Bratfest girls. These are the ones that just set a world record. That's in right. Wow. Two hundred nineteen thousand, I think it was. Two hundred and eight seven fifty two. That's what it was. <laughs> Excellent. Well, she's marketing. She ought to know. <laughs> and um, so, why did you? Uh, why did you have to decide to sponsor this event? Um, to be a co-sponsor. I don't know, Brianna. You're the one who started um, that part of it. Metcalf's is a, a big supporter of local farmers and local food. So it's in the last year or so, we've become um, a big supporter of buying local, um, supporting local farmers, and this is just a really great way for us to show our commitment to the community. Okay, <laughs> terrific, terrific. Thank you very much. There. I have two awesome Century Burgers with Great Dane German Pilgrims. Excellent. German Pilgrims. tomato onion jam with hook spider cheddar and a spinach pea vine blend with a beer vinaigrette. She used the happy urine from Central Waters and a house-made ciabatta that's made from our new baker. 100% local. 100% local. And does this carry forward in your restaurant as well? Absolutely. We, we do as much local as we can. We All our specials are local. Um, and then our ham is always local. Most of our sausage is always local. Okay. Um, and then a lot of our vegetables during the summer. Great. Anything you want to add? Uh, I hope everyone comes down to Ian's and tries us. We're not just drunk food. We're really good food all the time. Yeah. And it's uh, and what you're telling me then is that you can get a pizza yes. that's made with quality local ingredients. Yes. Um, it's not, you know, full of some of the junk that we get at some of the other places. No junk. We make every topping in-house. Really? We, we fry our own chicken. We grill our own chicken. Uh, yeah. We do everything in-house. And 350 a slice for a special
Buster pizza, cheese and pepperoni. The cheese is local as well. Okay. Uh, Two fifty a slice. So affordable meal. And somebody uh, told me that you make a heck of a brownie. We make a really good brownie in house. Uh, right. We use sassy cow, eighty eight percent butter. Okay. And we use Century Farm eggs mm -hmm. and Belgian chocolates, uh, made with lots of love. Okay. And they're absolutely fabulous. They are two dollars for a small and three dollars for a large. do a veggie burger. That was the one that we really came up with was the, the grilled cheese or the cheeseburger. Okay. So the cheeseburger is is actually bread cheese from Brunkow. Oh. So we uh, grill the cheese off then we're serving that with like olive tapenade and like creamy cucumbers, tomatoes, mm -hmm. onions. All of our buns are uh, real. Okay. And then uh, for our, our cheeseburger, for our burger burger, we're doing the Little John Burger, which is the version of our Big John Burger from the restaurant. Okay. We have uh, Fun Prairie Farm beef, uh, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, bacon, okay. uh, garlic aioli, and then we do a, a kind of like a barbecue sauce on the uh, burger itself. Yeah. And then we top it with uh, uh, spreadable brick cheese from uh, Widmer's, which is one of my favorite things. It makes it nice and gooey. Sweet. And uh, it's my favorite. I love it. Excellent. Excellent. And your beer? Uh, Pairing is with whom? Sand Creek, we have the, uh, the stout from Sand Creek's fantastic. Excellent, excellent. Love it. Having a good time? Of course. <laughs> Half drunk, I know. No, you, you look pretty well all the way drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. That's okay, but you're not slurring your words, and that's all we care about. So, no. so now tell me, okay, the name of your farm is? Northwood. Northwood, Northwood farm. farm. And it's organic uh, beef, is that correct? Well, it's an organic dairy farm. But we sell dairy beef to at the farmers market, and we have it here at the uh, Burgers and Brew. Okay, and who are you uh, teamed up with here at Burgers and Brew? We are teamed up with Sardine and uh, Garden to Be. Garden to Be. Tell me a little bit about the burger. Well. It's, uh, I guess, what you call grass-fed, so it's, mm -hmm. it's really lean, and uh, since it's from older animals, because grass-fed animals take longer to, to, uh, to get finished out, it's got a lot more flavor, okay. as most of the burgers here do. Okay. Um, and it's just um, local, mm -hmm. uh, organically raised, and uh, the, 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 the profits stay in the community, so it's kind of a good deal for everybody. And how long have you been farmers? Well, I was born on the farm that I farm on now, so I guess you could say all my life. Wow, okay. And how long has that been? have you been uh, well grass fed? Well, we were, we've been certified organic for going on 11 years. We've been, uh, I mean, we've always pastured cattle. Okay. So it's okay. nothing new for us. Okay, all right. But you're primarily dairy, is that correct? That's what pays the bills, yeah. Okay, all right. And your milk is uh, made into cheese or? Our milk goes to Cedar Grove and made into organic cheese, which we just started selling at the market today, as a matter of fact. Did you really? We did. And I'll tell you about that a little bit. So you're selling cheese made from your milk right. at the Dane County Farmer's Market. Yes. And, and and there's a little twist on that because we're selling it through the Family Farm Defender Fair Trade Cheese Project. And there's 35 farmers involved in this. And when we sell our cheese, we give the money back to the Family Farm Defenders, okay. and then they distribute it as premiums to the farmers. And the milk price they're paid on is, uh, for conventional is $30 a hundred, for organic is $35, which compares to about probably $12 regular conventional price and probably $21 organic price. Wow. So the farmers get a premium because the, the people that buy the cheese want to support local farmers, okay. um, and, and it's uh, kind of the way things should be so like.
working with whom? Joshua Perkins, I'm the kitchen manager at Willie okay, Street Co-op. Willie Street Co-op. Co Co and you came up with the uh, recipe for the Burgers and Brew 2009? I did. I okay. Did. And tell I, me a little bit about it. Well, um, I started out, I, I, I kind of knew we hit, we did a veggie burger last year, and yeah. I was excited to kind of get away from that. And the meat department has a burgeoning partnership with Black Earth Meats. Yeah. So I contacted Bartlett, who's back there helping serve, and okay. um, I asked about some ground lamb because I'm really fond of lamb. Okay. And uh, he said, yeah, I've got a great supplier for you. So we got some local organic and, and grass-fed lamb that we were able to get ground already. Nice. Right. There on, uh, really, it just kind of took shape around the idea of doing a riff. I was, I really enjoy taking sort of down market dishes and twisting them around. Uh -huh. So I knew I wanted to come up with something kind of sloppy, like a riff on a chili cheeseburger. Yeah. Something where I would just be like, Jesus, you know, I've got all this really moist mess all over this game. And, uh, and then instead of, because it's lamb, you know, I, I just combined it with a very little bit of cumin and coriander and hot sauce and thyme and garlic. And the rest of the flavors I wanted to be kind of, yeah, Indo, Indo Pakistani. Okay. So I have some curried, you could call it a doll. It's not, you know, it's, it's thicker than a doll. These are curried, curried lentils, red lentils. Okay. With tomato and onion and uh, some grilled red onions. And we're using a mixed feta from Car Valley. So again, you know, I mean, lamb is a meat that a lot of people, and myself included, uh, associate with either curry, you know, Indo-Pakistani cuisine or Greek cuisine. So both seem to be appropriate. Lamb has a very vivid, kind of gamey flavor, and it works well with the rest of these strong flavors. And the bun? The bun we made in-house. The buns were, we make our own bread for our in-house sandwiches, and we use the same uh, recipe. We just scaled down the size, and we added some curry powder and turmeric powder. Nice. For a little bit of flavor, but, but largely color. And they're really substantial, hearty buns, which is good in our case because they've got a lot to stand up to. Putting, yeah. putting a lot on there, as you know. And why did you choose to use a um, coal charcoal rather than a, a gas grill? Flavor. Flavor? Oh yeah. Okay. You can't substitute what's coming up from there right now, you know? Do <laughs> you have a, a quail egg that I could look at that's just... I mean, I've seen them well, we broken. Don't, we don't have them in the shell because we pre Oh, you don't? Them. Oh, okay. Because it really, it takes like four hours to crack 350 quail eggs. Who am I speaking with? I'm uh, speaking with Russ Klish, president of Lakefront Brewery. Lakefront Brewery. Now tell me a little bit about that. Where are you located? We're located in Milwaukee, just north of downtown on the Milwaukee River. We've done, we've worked with farmers in the state of Wisconsin for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. This year, we have the first crop, uh, or last year I should say, we had the first harvest of barley that came through and organically grown that we had malted at Brees Malting Company that we made beer with. So this would be the first time in a long time, I think some, or at least organically grown since Prohibition, uh, has gone into a beer made in Wisconsin. Really? And we're also growing with several farmers around the state uh, that are be growing some hops for us. And this okay. fall, we should have the first all Wisconsin beer that is going to be produced since Prohibition. Wow. You know, Wisconsin's such a great brewing tradition, and everything used to be able to be grown right here. Yeah. But now, now we got going back and, and I've you talk to people like the wine people and they'll talk to about something called terroir. I don't know if you're familiar with that. But terroir means you know it's like the earth and the, everything that's grown right where the plants are. And, you know you can grow a tomato almost everywhere but any every place different is gonna taste a little different. The grapes are gonna taste different for going into wine. And I believe it's exactly the same thing with hops and malt and, you know, for, for barley and the hops. And, and so Wisconsin I always believe that so probably with a sandy loam soil is going to have a different flavor that you're going to have that's compared to the Pacific Northwest with their hops and other things. So I'm going to be, you know, where it's going to be very interesting. I believe our beers here today have definitely taken an upgrade with the malt that we put into them now as compared to before and it's a little different taste and flavor and I think it's definitely better. I think we can do a little bit of Wow. Oh, nice work, Blue. Now, what exactly are we looking at here? Other than the chef eating the fries. I'm eating french fries. Uh, Thanks, Bill. I'll let you finish That's that. Perfect. And I'll try to remember to cut it out. <laughs> Sometimes I forget these things. That is a um, Pinot Ridge Farms lamb burger. Okay. With uh, Roth's 
a Gruyere cheese. Uh huh. A quail egg. Some uh, nice house-made pickles and a little French fry. You guys made those pickles? We did make the pickles. In-house? In-house. Wow. It's really? Mike's soon-to-be-famous pickles. They look beautiful. <laughs> they, do, they do look great, don't they? Yeah, excellent. And the, the egg, is that an ostrich egg? No, that, that's a quail egg. That's a quail egg. Because you see, the ostrich egg would be significantly larger. <laughs> yeah. More like this kind of size. Oh, uh, okay. quail egg is like a little tiny. And now, as many of these are, uh, that you, as you are doing, uh, there's rumor going around that you're actually going to start your own flock of quail. Yes. Okay. okay. And actually, we're going to raise them on the uh, lamb land. Ah. Because they really work well together. Excellent. The quail and the lamb, they kind of like they like each other a lot. I mean, the, the, the you know, quail just basically they hops just, on. They hang out on top, right? Yeah, hops on they top. They go for a ride. It's cool. Yeah, terrific. And this is, uh, now is this the same as you did last year or have you changed this at all? Nope, same as we did last year. Except I see this. We held fries. strong. Oh, except for the fries. Well, it was a real hit last year. So. Excellent. We held strong. Excellent. That's what we do. And are you going to be back next year? Oh, uh, definitely not. <laughs> well, okay, but will the quail and lamb be back next year? Yeah, the quail and the lamb will be back next year. I mean, it's nice to see this big a turnout, which was sold out probably a week ago, yeah. for local food, local beer, cheese, vegetables. Um, I think people are kind of starting to realize that we need to start to look to our local producers because this globalization thing just isn't working that well.